Greetings to you, my brethren. It is with joy that I come to you on this day to share with you in this devotion. It is my prayer that you are having a great day and that the devotion for today would encourage your heart as you step out and just face the day as you go to work and meet with others and share your faith with others. I want to start a little series and I want to speak to the believer. I've entitled this little series, Start Your Walk and Continue with Christ. This could also go to the non-believer who have not yet started their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ as to encourage such persons to trust Christ as Lord and Savior, become a child of God, become a Christian, a born again believer and walk with Christ. The songwriter by the name of Jack P. Schofield, he wrote a song entitled, Save, Save. He said, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Save by his power divine. Save to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I am saved, saved, saved. What a testimony. For one to be sure that he or she is saved. Some people say, you cannot know that you are saved. Well, the Bible says, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He also said, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Two portions of scripture I would like to read before we get into the full devotion. And that is Psalms chapter one, a very powerful psalm that speaks to the two classes of people in the world, the ungodly and the godly, the saved and the non-saved. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not wither, and what soever he doeth will prosper. Look at verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. What a portion of scripture. If you are not acquainted with Psalms chapter 1, it would be a good chapter for you to acquaint yourself with. Come with me over to the New Testament and let's look at a portion Paul wrote to the Colossians in chapter 2 and reading from verse 6 to verse number 10. He said, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, and ye are complete in him, which is the head 
of all principalities and powers. Start your walk and continue in Christ. I love the admonishment Paul gives to the believers at Colossae. He tells them, now that you have received Christ, you have started your walk with Christ, just go on walking with him by faith. Go on living and laboring by faith. This morning, I would like to especially encourage the young Christians, those who have recently placed their faith and trust in the Lord. Now, there are many today who are afraid to make that step for Christ. And the reason why they are afraid is that they feel like they will not be able to hold out that they would send and go back and they don't want to start and go back. Well, the truth of the matter is, all one needs to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all the other things will be added unto you. People need to understand that when one becomes a child of God, that individual is not perfect. Such a person is far away from being perfect. And because of that, one will make mistakes. But as one continues to grow, one may not be sinless, but one will eventually find him or herself sinning less. So to the believer, especially the new Christian this morning, I want to share a few thoughts with you. Number one, what it means to be a Christian. There are so many people use the term I'm a Christian and they're not even sure what it means. So let me just explain to you a little bit today what it means to be a Christian. We have heard the term so often, I am a Christian. What is a Christian? Who truly is a Christian? We have heard some say, I was born a Christian. Some also believe to be born in a country where people believe in God, make him or her a Christian. To some, to have a Christian education makes one a Christian. Some further believe to accept and apply Christian principles make them a Christian. While others believe to be Christian, baptized, or become a church member makes one a Christian. Well, the answer to all of that is no. It is possible to do all of these things and still not be a Christian, according to verse 6 of our text. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Let me say it again. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So a Christian is one who has received Christ. Yes, to be a Christian, one must receive Christ. Not one who believes about Christ. Not one who receives the doctrines of Christ. It is one who receives Christ as Savior and Lord. Let us see what scripture has to say about this. To believe on him means to receive him. In John 1, 11 and 12, the scripture says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. To believe on him means to receive him. Secondly, the proof that one is a Christian is to have the Lord dwelling in his or her heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5, the scripture says, Examine yourselves. This is something that I teach and encourage people to do because we are very good on examining others. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except 
he be reprobate? Then a Christian is one in whom Christ dwells. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then lastly, Christ dwelling in us is a mystery, but a glorious reality to the Christian in whom he dwells. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, I wish I could share a little more this morning, but my time is up, way up, so I have to stop, but I'll pick up next morning. Father, we are so thankful to you that we can become children of God, that we are not fooling ourselves and saying that we are Christians when we are not. So Father, I pray that you would bless every Christian, every child of God, even those that may have doubts, Lord, strengthen their faith. Be with us even as we go and serve you. Help us to sin less. We love you, praise you, and thank you. Bless every brother and sister. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for listening. Please, please help me share this devotion with some other friend. Do have a great day.